KDAY TV, your first alert station. Action 2 News this morning live stream starts now. Hi there, good Thursday morning. Welcome to our Action 2 News live stream. And it's been a busy morning for, for the weather. We've talked about all, all the S's, the yes. sloppy, uh, snowy, uh, slick slushy. road, slushy, Slush everything that we yes. can talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Steve Balon this morning on this first alert weather day, Steve. If I, if I could, I, I would add one more. Slurpy. Like, have you Ooh. ever gone to, like, the convenience store? Yeah. Like, you know, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. <laughs> yeah. There's not as many of those necessarily around Green Bay, but they, they would sell the Slurpee or, you know, mm -hmm. and you put in the raspberry or the cherry or They're whatever. delicious. It's the same kind of consistency with the snow. Uh, yeah, so here we are looking at First Alert Viper Max. It's, it's about to end. Uh, we do have some uh, snow that's just wrapping up in the Fox Cities and Green Bay. Still coming down in Sturgeon Bay and Manitowoc, but back to the west, the snow is all pretty much said and done. When we were around midnight and into the pre-dawn hours, it initially came down as rain, Emerson. You see that green there on the map? Sure. And so that helped to cut into some of the snowfall totals compared to some folks farther to the north, up towards the upper Michigan border. It was interesting because when I woke up this morning, it sounded like rain on, on my roof. Like right. it was, I was expecting the snow, but yeah, the, so that's what the reason was. Eventually there. the snow did win out. Sure. Uh, but you know, because we had uh, uh, more rain and more of a higher moisture content snow, a lot of the roads in some of our major cities across east central Wisconsin are more just wet to slushy. Manitowoc looks a little bit more snow packed. You're right at the freezing mark there. And so I want to show you some of the snowfall totals because they're all over the board. Uh, the highest in the north where it came down is all snow last night. Pembine, half a foot. Wow. Niagara, four inches. That's on the south side. Glen Beulah, that's in Sheboygan County, three inches, two inches in Crivets. You know, Pembine and Crivets, I mean, they're in the same county. You sure. Know? So from northern Baronet County to southern Baronet County, big difference. But in the valley, not as much. A slushy 1.2 inches of snow at the National Weather Service in Green Bay. So for the, for, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, that just shows, like you said, uh, the, the different bands and whatnot that come through, how different it can be one county compared to the other. Yeah, and so that makes, you know, trying to forecast it all very <laughs> it tricky. Makes it all because, a challenge. Because, you know, what happened here is different what happened there. Sure. Uh, all these counties, though, across eastern Wisconsin will be under a winter weather advisory from the Weather Service for uh, about another, what time is it now, for another, um, you know, 45, 50 minutes. And so uh, the snow is going to be wrapping up between now and 8 o'clock. The sun is going to be back out in the next few hours, but as the skies brighten up, the wind, ooh, it's going to be kind of blustery and chilly. And just a fresh reminder that you know, winter's not done. Our high of 35 should be around or just after lunch, but it's really going to feel like the 20s out gonna there. It's going to start feeling like February is supposed to feel. We really haven't had that all month no, so far. No, we've, we've been dealing with such a mild winter because of uh, El Nino, the warming of the Pacific waters sure. out towards the equator. And uh, that's really changed the weather pattern across uh, North America. But we have one, two cold fronts coming through. The first one coming through is going to help cause the wind to pick up. The second one coming in tonight is going to cause the temperatures to head on down heading into Friday morning. So there goes the snow on first alert pinpoint predictor. We should be clearing things out in Green Bay around eh, 10 o'clock, give or take. And so the afternoon looks sunny to partly sunny as the north will probably have some clouds drifting in from upper Michigan. But otherwise, it's quiet and partly cloudy as we head towards this evening. And that wind, Emerson, this is our hour by hour wind forecast. Oof. Look at the afternoon. Northwest winds Hold will be, on to your hats. They're so going to be gusting up around 30 or 35 miles sure. an hour. And it, obviously, like you said, you're going to make things feel a bit chillier as we continue throughout throughout the week, right, right. into the weekend? Yeah, so I mean, so the, the, the highs today will be in the 30s. The, the wind chills will be in the 20s, but you can see by 6 o'clock this evening, we're heading down into the teens. Tomorrow morning, wind chills will be in the single digits, and you'll find the seasonably cold air sticking around as we start off our upcoming weekend. I know I'm just flying through all the graphics here, but I want to jump ahead to our First alert, seven day forecast, because I want you to see that weekend forecast that you're yeah, talking yeah. about. So 35 today, snow ending, upper 20s for Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday we bounce back up to 37 degrees. We're going to start another warming trend as we go into next week. And the weekend kind of looks like a mix of sun and clouds. Uh, once the snow is done, Emerson, there really is no big storms in sight, but there may be a few showers that head our way Tuesday night going into Wednesday. We always talk about that Wisconsin roller coaster mm -hmm. of weather, Steve, and that 
pretty clear right there by next Tuesday, Wednesday, back up in the mid to upper 40s. That's if it's a roller coaster, who bought all the tickets? You know, you go to Bay Beach and you've got like all those <laughs> a string of tickets, you know, so somebody must have gotten a whole string of, of roller coaster tickets because it's been a wild ride this winter. I thought that was you. You're the one that's been forecasting it all, right? <laughs> I'm a cheapskate. I'll tell my kids, only five bucks or only 10 bucks. I don't know. Somebody bought all the tickets. I don't know. Uh, all right. Thanks, Steve. Hey, while you guys were chatting, we had a push alert here. DOT reporting several crashes on I-41 between Appleton and Green Bay. That's been keeping us, Aisha's been keeping us up to date here. And first alert traffic this morning, Catherine is off. So give us the latest on this. All right, yeah, sure. It's been very, very busy. As soon as we started to see the snow, the wet, snow hit the pavement and it was sticking. That's when we started to see the crashes. This is what we actually just sent via that push alert that you just saw. Tammy crashes along 41 several between Green Bay and Appleton. I count right here one, two and three, not to mention that one west of pier, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, it's got stop and go. So people are not they're barely moving in some areas at least here on 41. So this one right here is the Shering Road exit that I mentioned during the show. The shoulders are blocked, but the camera, as you saw, things are improving a little bit, but th this is the one near West of Pier, south near Main Avenue on 41. Uh, there is a crash there, and just north of where this little symbol is, uh, it's red in the red category. So everybody's going to have to give them, themselves a little bit of extra time. There's that Lawrence one also. The shoulder is blocked, but you can see it's in the green, so it doesn't look like it's affecting traffic too much there. And then we head over to Chilton. That area, there is a side highway there. I'm not exactly sure which one that is, if it's County Road Y. Um, but near Chilton, there's another crash, and you could see 151. A, a lot of yellow, a lot of orange in that area, too. Lots to talk about when it comes to first alert traffic this morning, but showing more of that traffic flow a lot of the green and yellow throughout northeast wisconsin and then are you guys bored yet there's so much <laughs> going on there is more to show the slippery stretches which i know we've been talking a lot about this morning it's we haven't seen the snow in a little bit at least like this right, right so sure. i think people are maybe trying to get back into the swing of it mm -hmm. aisha has been a busy bee this yeah, morning uh, keeping you. up with all of that aisha we appreciate it we want to take a live look at the roadways uh, right now emily roberts has been out all morning First alerting us to the driving conditions. Emily, where are you right now? Good morning. We are driving east on Double O Northland Ave. You might be more familiar with that in the Appleton area. So we are just about to pass uh, Van Zeeland Nursery and Landscape, if you're familiar with that, uh, going through Casa Loma right now. But this morning, I've been all over the Fox Valley, really. Fox Crossing to the Lake Winnebago shoreline near Harrison, um, Interstate 41, highways, side roads. So lots of changing conditions this morning. I've really seen it all and seen a, a lot of plows out there. That's the good news today. Have you noticed it increasing? I mean, the snow has been sticking now. So, you, you know, from the time you were out there early, you know, around four this morning until now. Right, it's changed quite a bit, really night and day, literally as the sun starts coming up. As I was heading into work this morning, early, early 3 a.m., you know, another scary morning, uh, even on Interstate 41. Usually 41 is, is pretty easy going, even when we get some storms uh, as the plows go there and the, and the salt trucks and all that jazz. But this morning I hit multiple slick spots on Interstate 41 where, where a lot of people might be off guard, not expecting that. Um, but as we've gone through our morning show, it got a lot more slushy on some other highways uh, like 76. So lots of slush, uh, some other spots like where we're driving right now look more wet and they've looked like that all morning. Uh, just about an hour ago, around our six o'clock, 6.30 half hours, the snow really started sticking to the ground a lot more near the Harrison area. Um, so lots of different things all around today, but no matter what, the thing that has stayed consistent is that you never know when those slick spots could pop up. We slid around a little bit going through some roundabouts today, so really something to be mindful of. Uh, another thing I'm noticing, this is really wet stuff. We've been talking about that all morning and first floor weather, first floor traffic. This is wet, slushy snow. So when cars pass you, especially those bigger trucks, it's been kicking up that slush and splashing it on your windshield, sometimes a lot and sometimes it's loud and that can be kind of jarring. It could surprise you. It definitely surprised me. So another obstacle to be mindful of.
Emily, we appreciate it. And Chris, who's driving, we always do these driving live shots as safely as we can. We have Emily in the passenger seat there talking it, talking us through it. And as you heard, they've been out since 4.30 this morning. And cool to see that different look yes. as you drive through certain areas where it doesn't mm -hmm. look like there's any snow sticking. And then uh, when the, the sun comes up and you can right. see all of that, a uh, very great look to have there. Yeah, so keeping you safe this morning. All right, turning now to talk about the Salvation Army of Greater Green Bay. They're asking for the community's help because it fell short of its Christmas campaign goal for the second year now in a row. That's right, all the, the bell ringers that yes. are always out there. They're synonymous mm -hmm. with the, the holiday season. Kristen Allen live in Green Bay this morning. What was the Salvation Army's Christmas campaign goal, Kristen? It was $1.4 million, and they're still about a little over $180,000 short of hitting that goal. I believe last year their goal was $1.3 million, and they also fell short of that goal. And even though they fell short of that goal, they still had to continue to raise it again this past year, you know, in 2023, uh, because of inflation and prices go up for things and the costs for their services. So they still have to keep raising their goal and, and hope that they meet it. And what are they asking people after knowing that, you know, they fell short? What, what can people do to help out? Well, there, you, of course, you can always make a donation to the Salvation Army anytime, but they're really encouraging people, if they are able to, to continue to make donations, even right now. That red kettle campaign, you typically see those red kettles out and people are ringing through Christmas Eve. So they're asking people, if they can, to make donations now into the new year. Any donation, big or small, will help. They're asking people also to consider making a recurring donation, so a monthly donation. And they say that anything even as small as $25 a month would make a big difference. And if you're interested in making any sort of donation, you can go to our website, WBAY.com, where we have a link. All right, Kristen Allen reporting live. Kristen, thank you. And when we tell you that Aisha has been busy this morning, <laughs> we're not kidding because she's been tracking that traffic. Very busy. And yes. she's also keeping us safe at the first alert safety desk this morning, yeah. Aisha. We yeah. appreciate this. And, and I'm particularly interested in this story talking about COVID yeah. and, and one of the, the side effects that you were learning about, like long term, it's about really interesting. fatigue. Right. And you think about it, when I had COVID, I felt so tired. I think we've mm -hmm. talked about that. I was mm -hmm. so tired for a long period of time. Mm -hmm even after, so it does make sense. And this is, I'm gonna use my notes because there's a lot of sciencey stuff. Um, it is a federal report by the CDC, which is also pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, they said that you're at least four times more likely to develop chronic fatigue if mm -hmm. you've had COVID. It's that simple, mm -hmm. at least in this study. So it, you could see a little bit of the bullet points here. Um, they followed patients for about 11 months and they compared it to people who didn't have COVID. Um, more than 9,000 people of the, the people that didn't have COVID. And I want to check to see how many people, it was 4,500 patients from the University of Washington. Um, they took their electronic records and this was between February of 2020, February of 2021, between that time period. Um, so they said that 68% at risk of fatigue for COVID patients. And again, about four times more likely to develop chronic fatigue. So they kind of followed them along for an 11 month period and then waited another year and checked in mm -hmm. again and they found these statistics. Um, again, it's just one study, but mm -hmm. the long of it or the short of the long version of it is um, they wanna look into again, what's happening with people after they get COVID, not just mm -hmm. immediately, but long-term, right? So many unknowns about it. Exactly. You know, so they're yeah. continuing to study that. So it's good to have that update. Absolutely. All right, Aisha, thanks so much. And before we go, a preview of tonight's small towns. Yeah, and tracing his family history, a Portage County man came across a very unique connection dating back hundreds of years. He learned there's been a teacher or principal in every generation dating back to the birth of our nation. That is a long time. Mm. Jeff Alexander taking us to Amherst to learn more about this family's tremendous legacy in education right along Highway 10 west of Wapaka, where there's a little old schoolhouse and it's still standing today. Charles Larson graduated from eighth grade there in 1943, and it's been 64 years since the bell last rang. But for Bob's family, the pipe school in Amherst is filled with the history teachers dating back to 1857. Bob, his wife, and three of their children carried on that legacy of educators, but it was a legacy he wasn't really aware of when he was a boy. Well, mother had always talked about it, and it was just sort of in the background. And then as the years went by, I started doing a little 
digging going back and after I retired I got seriously interested in it. And thanks to family genealogy books compiled by past relatives, Charles learned 10 of his ancestors taught at the Pipe School and that was just the beginning. He then found there were teachers in every generation dating back to his great, 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 great grandfather, Phineas Cadwell, who became a teacher after fighting for the Connecticut militia in the Revolutionary War, wow. learning a lot about the family there. And so you're gonna learn more about the family's passion for teaching that's in Small Towns with Jeff Alexander tonight on Action 2 News at six. That takes the saying runs in the family to a <laughs> right. whole new level in terms <laughs> of education. Sure. Incredible there, can't wait for that one. Happening today, thousands of Wisconsin middle school students are heading to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. It's to fuel their passion and curiosity for STEM, that's short for science, technology, engineering, and math, and the Mind Trekkers Roadshow. It's a two-day collaborative effort by Michigan Tech, NWTC, and New Manufacturing Alliance. And they have some really cool experiences for those students there. A lot of science going on from being inside a bubble, stabbing a balloon without popping it, and yeah, what you're seeing there on the screen, playing a piano made of bananas. Banana What's that PM. all about? <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. That got our, our, our piqued our curiosity there. So this is all, of course, to support a strong future workforce in the STEM field. So oh. important. Always loved field trip days. That yes. sounds like it's going to be a great day for mm -hmm. those kids. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> They'll have a lot it's of fun. It's nice to get out, out of the classroom for sure. Yeah. We'll have some fun, right? Yeah. A lot of the kids, they, they like to do a lot of hands-on things. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to hear somebody blab on about it. They want to actually participate <laughs> and, and yeah. learn by oh, touching sure. and doing. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you guys. I know you've been busy. Aisha, you've been busy. Yeah. Steve and Emily, who's been out on the roads, and Chris, our photographer, too. So keeping everybody safe this morning. I, I know it's, you know, it's one of those days where you're like, okay, middle of February, mm -hmm. and we've had snow before, but mm -hmm. as you're seeing, you know, those backups on 41 there, totally. it can be dangerous. Be careful out mm -hmm. there. And now we've got to cut it in just a you know, couple minutes here, so we got to prepare for that. So on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Stay tuned. We'll see you in that cut-in. Have a great day, everybody.